questions. I've got some questions. Hello, and welcome to our podcast on questioning the text. We are calling this a during reading activity because this is one of the many things that your brain should be doing while you are reading. And as we've talked about before, reading is not just moving your eyes over a text and seeing the words and pronouncing them to yourself. Strong readers actually engage with the text. Their brain is not just tracking the words, but they are thinking about it at both a literal level and at a more interpretive level. And so one way we like to encourage students to engage is to push them to question the text as they are reading. Can they think about things that they want to know more about from this text? So let's go ahead and see more. So what do we mean by questioning the text? We don't necessarily mean saying, ooh, they are proposing A, but I question that I think B is the right answer. That's a different type of questioning and could be part of this whole scenario, but it is the act of asking questions of the text and about while you are reading. And since most times reading is kind of a solitary act, meaning that you're doing it on your own, the asking of questions comes in the form of your annotations. So as you are reading and things are sparking the questioning part of your brain, those are the types of things you would write in the margins as annotations. And so there are a few levels of questions that will help compartmentalize those things that you are thinking and questioning as you are going. So here's what we mean by the levels of questions. There aren't any great titles for these, we just call them levels one, two, or three questions. Here's what each of those is in specific. Level one questions are those questions where you're just checking factual information. And so a level one question can be asked of the text and the answer for that can be found in the text. So for example, what is the name of Scout's brother? The answer would be Jem. We don't have to go to some other source, we don't have to go to the encyclopedia, we can find that answer right there in the book To Kill a Mockingbird. In which country does the book Persepolis take place? The answer is Iran. It says right there in the text. We often call these literal level or snorkeling level questions. Basically you are just reading the lines. These would be level one questions. To give an example from a fairy tale, just to model the idea of writing level one questions, you might have something like this. From what object does the fairy godmother use to create the coach? What is Cinderella's deadline for leaving the ball? Any of these questions could be explicitly found in the text. They say the words. What object? The pumpkin. What's the deadline? Midnight. It says the words. So asking level one questions is a good method to ensure that you are reading actively. Stop at the end of a paragraph, ask yourself and the text a couple level one questions, and if you can answer those, you have a better chance of grasping the material. Go ahead and proceed to the next paragraph. If we take the level one question format and put it into a nonfiction text, a question like, what does this word mean? How old does one have to be to become a senator or a congressman? These are questions we could ask of the text to check our knowledge and that would be explicitly stated in the text we're reading. There's not going to be any governmental textbook that we're going to read that is going to imply how old you have to be to become a senator. They're going to say it explicitly. And so as you're reading this section on Congress and you feel like you wanna check your knowledge of what you've read, Ask yourself a level one question. What does this word mean? How old do you have to be? How are the numbers for state's representatives figured? Those are going to be explicitly stated. And if you can be thinking about that and you can question the text and you can go back into the text to find that answer, then you're on the right track to being able to understand it more fully. Level two questions are questions that require some amount of analysis of the text or parts of that text. You may have to look in a variety of places in the text in order to give a valid response for this. We call these interpretive or scuba level questions, and it's the idea of reading between the lines. The answers to these, the interpretations of these questions are not going to be explicitly stated. We need to put some puzzle pieces together throughout the text, and we may need to look at those pieces throughout the text to make those responses valid. Again, going back to Cinderella, how is Cinderella similar to and different from her stepsisters? Why does the stepmother treat Cinderella so poorly? Does Cinderella get what she deserves in the end? Do the stepsisters. 
In order to validly answer any of these, you can't just go to page 15. It says, she treats her so poorly because blank, blank, blank. That's not really going to happen in the level of reading that we are going to be engaging in at the high school level. So we need to be able to put pieces together from that whole text. Perhaps we take a bit from the beginning that says that the stepmother married Cinderella's father. Perhaps we put a bit together that shows that the stepmother was feeling this way at some other point. Perhaps we put a little bit at the end together to truly characterize the stepmother. And then based on these three examples from the text, then we can formulate a valid response to this interpretive question. There isn't necessarily one explicitly stated answer. We have to put our brains to work, we have to engage in the text, and we have to engage in more of the text from beginning, middle to end in order to offer a response. These are level two questions. Level two questions in a nonfiction text might be something like this. How does the power of large population states compare to that of small population states in the Senate? There's probably not going to be one paragraph in the government textbook or the history textbook that explicitly says, here is the balance of power between large and small states. The text is probably going to say something like, here's how large states benefit from the Senate. Here's how small states benefit from the Senate. Here's how they work in the House of Representatives, and then move on. And then you are asking the question to fill in the blanks, to read between the lines, to compare how does the power between large and small states matter in the Senate. You're going to have to put together a couple of breadcrumbs, connect a few dots in order to form a more valid interpretation of that question. And because it's not explicitly stated as an answer and you are interpreting, that becomes a level two question, reading between the lines a little bit. The last type of questions would be level three. And these are questions that are more open-ended. They go beyond the text. They may be using the text as a specific case study of something, but they are pushing us as readers to think beyond the walls of this and to go into more abstract ideas or issues. Perhaps these are questions that lead us toward our discovery of theme. Again, that's the universal lesson that texts want to teach us. For example, again from Cinderella, what is the nature of true love? Is there such a thing as happily ever after? How might the merging of families be made easier? You could truly answer these without having read Cinderella, but your discussion of them might be made more rich, more complete, more specific by referencing the text. So if you're looking at the first one, what is the nature of true love? You might examine the text of Cinderella and say that is or isn't true love then you can expand beyond the walls of the text to look at your own lives, characters from other stories, from other movies, etc. But a level three question is going to push us toward the idea of the abstract, push us toward the idea of application to new situations, and that's exactly what we're using text for. It's not to master the ins and outs of Cinderella per se, but it's to use that text to help guide us in these bigger, more universal questions oftentimes thematic in nature. And these are going to be your level three questions. Some examples of level three questions in a nonfiction text might be something like, how do migration patterns of Americans connect to the House of Representatives? And while that may seem a little level two-ish because you can kind of connect a couple dots you might have read about and then say, here's how patterns affect the numbers of representatives in the House, you could also take this and go beyond and say, what's causing people to migrate in the first place? What happens to the places where they leave? What happens to the places where they go? How does that matter to the balance of the house? How does that matter in balance of rural and urban populations? How does that matter in terms of conservative or liberal voting? So you might have read one fact or a couple paragraphs of fact in a government textbook, but how do we take that and apply it to something else? That's going to be a more level three question where we're taking something we've read, we're putting together the dots, and we're able to not only read and understand what we've got, but apply it to some greater question that is more thematic in nature. So let's go ahead and take a minute to practice this. So let's go ahead and practice for a minute. Let's pretend you've been given this government text on the Fourth Amendment. It is nonfiction, and you are reading through it for an assignment for the next day. Go ahead and pause the podcast, read over the text, 
but also take a look at the questions that I have asked along the right hand side. You can see that as I'm going, I would probably stop my reading and write them down over on the right hand side in my margin. So these may or may not be incomplete sentences, but they are just annotations, so therefore me as the reader. But you can see here that we've asked some level one, two, or three questions along the way. Here's another example from that reading a little bit later in there. In the original text, they go into a case study of New Jersey versus TLO, a Supreme Court case from 1985. Again, go ahead and pause the podcast, read over this small selection, and notice the types of questions that I was asking over in my own annotations on the right-hand side. And if you're feeling pretty sassy and you feel like you have a grasp on how to question the text, go ahead and practice a little bit more on your own. Here is one more selection from that chapter on the Fourth Amendment. Again, go ahead and stop the podcast, read over the selection in front of you, and ask yourself, what questions could you ask of this text? Perhaps a couple level one questions, just to check for understanding, some level two questions, maybe connecting it back to the previous sections you read, but also perhaps some level three questions. How does the Fourth Amendment apply to all of humanity? What are the limits of this? What are the drawbacks to it? See if you can think of some more application questions for this nonfiction writing. So that's about it for questioning the text. Just in review, we have a couple different levels of questions, one, two, and three. And you can go back to the slides to see exactly what those are. Additionally, the whole point of questioning is to force our brains to be reading actively. If we are engaged in the text and going back and forth with this text and able to ask the text some questions, it forces us to stay engaged, to stay current and in the moment, and then pushes us as readers to seek answers for those, whether they are explicit level one questions or these more grand level three questions. It forces us to remain active in our reading, gives us a chance to have some better annotations, and ultimately to better comprehend the text we are reading, which is always our goal when we are reading to learn. As always, if you have any questions, please bring those into class. We'll get those answered for you. Otherwise, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon.